uh, of a mutation negative advanced lung cancer. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Hello. So, uh, um, yes, yes, you are. Yeah, you are. So, uh, while all of us like to, uh, next slide please, while all of us uh, love to treat, uh, we all send NGS on most of our patients with the lung cancer, especially the adenocarcinoma and the adenosquamous. Uh, can you move to the next slide please? No, uh, the previous one. Uh, I apologize for this. I'm not able to control my slides because uh, I'm calling in from the mobile. The computer was not working. So anyway, uh, we all understand and uh, we send NGS on most of our lung cancer patients. And while a lot of them will have targetable, targetable druggable mutations, there'll be a large number of patients who will not have any mutations and whom we will have to decide uh, uh, what what systemic therapy and what approach we would be taking? Uh, in the in fact, it, it is it appears from the data from TMH that the patients without uh, drugable mutations is actually a little bit more in the subcontinent. So for those patients, next slide, please. We have an uh, uh, an algorithmic approach where we look at the histological subtype, we look at the, uh, uh, we do the molecular profiling. If they have no mutations, we look at the PDL1, and uh, now more and more we are also looking at the uh, tumor mutational burden. We have learned to subdivide these patients who are mutation negative into three big subgroups that are PDL1 more than 50%, PDL1 between 1 to 49%, and those who are, uh, are PDL1 negative less than 1%. Next slide, please. We have the basic uh, armamentarium at our disposal currently for these patients is chemotherapy, age-old chemotherapy, targeted therapy that was introduced in the early 2000s, and of course, the latest uh, uh, kid on the block, which is immunotherapy. And through the next slides, I will show you how the treatment has evolved, and we will spend most of the discussion basically on immunotherapy. Next slide, please. So, of course, when we are treating patients with stage 4 lung cancer, we of course have to apply the general principles. We need to palliate their symptoms. If they have bone and brain metastases, we offer them palliative radiation, uh, orthopedic stabilization. Um, we offer them denosumab, bisphosphonates, and pain control. These days, however, something uh, that I find uh, a little difficult in um, advanced lung cancer is how to counsel these patients. Because while at the end of the day, uh, it is incurable for majority of the patients, there will be a small subset of patients who could have long-term control. So um, how do we counsel the patient, keeping them hopeful, but also preparing them for the, for the reality of the disease, despite all the advances that have taken place? Uh, the fact remains that for most of our patients, it is incurable. Next slide, please. Uh, I will just briefly touch on chemotherapy because uh, we all of us are quite familiar with um, the, the chemotherapy regimens used in advanced or small lung cancer. We know that platinum doublet is better than supportive care alone. We know that patients who have a good performance stat status is platinum is better. There appears to be better response rate and there were some trials that showed perhaps an increased overall survival. But for most of us, we we substitute carboplatin where we find that cisplatin cannot be tolerated. And... Um, as lung cancer is mostly seen in the elderly, I feel that for most of us, probably carboplatin is the, uh, the, the agent of choice uh, when we combine with the, uh, in the platinum doublet. Single agent chemotherapy for the elderly is definitely an option. There was the Elvis trial that showed that venorelbine alone was, uh, was better than by supportive care. Sometimes we may consider non-platinum doublets. And of course, we all understand that based on the histology, whether they are non-squamous or squamous, we will choose uh, the appropriate uh, uh, partner for the platinum doublet. Especially in non-squamous, we will consider pemetrexid and in squamous, uh, gemcitabine or the vaccines. Next slide, please. So um, in 2000, we, uh, we looked and we looked at this trial, which was the role of bevacizumab in, in non-small cell lung cancer. Patients were given paclitaxel, the patients, there were two arms, was paclitaxel and carboplatin alone, or the combination along with bevacizumab. Uh, there was a slight improvement in median overall survival, 12.3 uh, months in the, in the bevacizumab plus chemo arm versus 10.3 in the uh, chemo alone arm. This was statistically significant. 
they found that there were a larger number of patients who were alive at one year, uh, 51% in the BEV plus chemo arm versus 44% in the chemo alone. And uh, uh, this persisted, the difference persisted at two years. The response rate was significantly higher in the BEV plus chemo arm uh, versus chemo alone. However, at the uh, cost of increased toxicity. A couple of years later, next slide, please. Uh, the toxicity profile, of course, was increased neutropenia in the bare plus chemo arm, an increased rate of uh, hypertension, proteinuria, and the one that is uh, probably uh, the most horrifying for patients is the increased risk of bleeding events. And with that, it came about that patients who you thought, uh, patients who were squamous, who had untreated brain metastases, and those who were at a risk for uh, uh, increased bleeding should not be chosen for this particular regimen. Next slide, please. Uh, in 2013, they looked at the point break trial, looked at uh, bevacizumab with carbo uh, pemetrexid and carboplatin versus bevacizumab with paclitaxel carboplatin. And they found that while, uh, while there was no difference in overall survival, there was a slight uh, increased uh, number of patients who were alive at one year with the PEM plus uh, PEM carbobev arm as, as compared to pacli carbobev arm. Next slide, please. The difference. The one big difference that did stand out was that the, the Pemetrexid uh, plus Platinum plus BEV had a better toxicity profile as compared to the Paclitaxel Carbobev arm, especially the um, the uh, uh, especially the neuropathy, which we all know can be very debilitating for patients. There was a combined analysis of uh, both the ECOG 4599 and Point Break, and they found that this combination was uh, was did show survival benefit for those like less than 75, but none for the older age group. And um, I think now most of us are probably not using this combination uh, in favor of the newer therapies that have come about. Next slide, please. Just a brief point about another targeted agent, ramisurumab. This is, has been approved in the second line setting uh, in uh, in combination with docetaxel as it provides a slight improvement in OS and a slight uh, improvement in performance of uh, uh, progression-free survival. Next slide, please. But the real, the real thing I think that has changed treatment for patients uh, with non-small cell lung cancer who do not have any uh, druggable mutations is the era is the advent of immunotherapy. As uh, we're all familiar with the NCCN guidelines, and based on the PDL1 levels, they have divided treatment of these patients. Um, if they are more than PDL1 more than fifty percent, PDL1 one to forty nine percent, and PDL1 less than one percent. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So I will uh, start with the uh, use of immunotherapy as a single agent in advanced non-small lung cancer with this trial, which is the Keynote 024. This looked at patients uh, who had a PDL one more than 50%, um, and uh, they were randomized to pembrolizumab alone versus a chemotherapy doublet uh, for four to six cycles. As you can see here, there was a significant difference in the progression-free survival. Um, the response rates were higher, 44% in the Pembro arm versus 27.8% in the chemo alone arm. Uh, the grade three and higher adverse effects, uh, adverse event, uh, events were lower in the Pembro group. And uh, there was a 2019 survival update which showed that for the patients with PDL1 more than 50%, overall survival with Pembro alone was 30 months as compared to 14.2 months with chemotherapy alone, it's almost doubling your survival. And at three years, uh, more than 40% of patients were still alive in the Pembro group as compared to 25% with the chemo alone. I have to admit that I think that in this trial, the chemo alone arm also did quite well because most of us know that uh, with chemo alone, most of the patients do not live beyond, uh, uh, the one-year survival is about 15%, but perhaps because the crossover allowed, patients got on to receive Pembro uh, or immunotherapy in the second line setting. Next slide, please. Um, as I, uh, as we talked before, the side effects were much lower with the uh, with the pembrolizumab compared to the chemotherapy group. Uh, next slide, please. But what we did realize that it is not all roses with immunotherapy because there are immune mediated adverse events uh, seen in thirty percent of the patients. Um, the grade three or uh, higher immune mediated events were about ten percent in this group, and uh, the most common was hypothyroidism followed by hypothyroidism uh, and pneumonitis infusion reactions, etc. Next slide, please. Uh, 
I'm sorry, can we go back to the previous slide? Oh, yeah, this slide. Uh, so uh, the other trial that bolstered the use of single agent uh, uh, pembrolizumab in the patients with a, uh, with a PDL1 score more than uh, 50% is the chemo 0 or 2, which looked at the use of pembrolizumab versus chemotherapy alone in patients who had a PDL1 more than 1%. And as we can see here, for the entire cohort, uh, which includes patients from 1 to 50% and higher, there was a significant difference in um, overall survival. In the PEMRO alone group, it was 16.7 months versus 12.1 months with uh, the chemotherapy. Next slide, please. Of course, the benefit was higher in those who had a PDL one more than 50%. And in that, in that subgroup, the overall survival with PEMRO alone was 20 months versus 12.2 months. Um, so the, the, the study seemed to think that most of the survival benefit was derived from the patients who had higher levels of PDL1. The one point, however, that is interesting in this trial is that even for the patients who had a PDL1 between 1 to 49%, PEMBRO was not inferior to chemotherapy as the median overall survival was more or less the same. And so for perhaps for some patients, who have a lower PDL1 but are not willing to take chemotherapy, pembrolizumab alone for the subgroup could be, still be an option. Next slide, please. Uh, what about the condition of uh, immunotherapy with chemotherapy? We have the Keynote 189 uh, published in 2018. Uh, this looked at stage 4 non squamous, non small cell lung cancer without uh, an EGFR or ALK uh, mutation. And they randomized the patients in two is to one, pembrolizumab plus pemetrexid and carboplatin or cisplatin versus uh, placebo and chemotherapy. Uh, the pembrolizumab was continued up to 31 cycles after the chemotherapy uh, was discontinued. Next slide, please. Uh, in this, uh, uh, the PDL1 uh, assay used was 22 C3. Uh, we will see that with nivolumab, the different assays used. And, uh, they had one third of the patients with PDL1 less than 1%, about one third between um, 1 to 49, and one third of the patients had a PDL1 more than uh, 50%. Next slide, please. As we can see here for the entire cohort, uh, the overall survival was significantly in favor of the PEMRO plus chemotherapy combination. Um, it was at the time the trial was published, it was not reached versus 11.3. And in the 2020 survival update, it was 22 versus 10.7 months. So there was a doubling of the overall survival with the use of pembrolizumab in the patients with a PDL1 more than uh, 1%. The progression free survival was also almost double. And uh, uh, the chemotherapy and the, uh, the toxicity of PEMRO plus chemotherapy was as expected. The one thing that the uh, authors wanted to point out that there was an increased number of patients in the PEMRO plus chemo arm who, who discontinued the chemotherapy. Uh, um, in this subgroup analysis, uh, the further point that um, I wanted to highlight was that the overall survival uh, was improved regardless of the PDL1. So while, of course, it was higher for those who had more than 50%, even for those who had less than a PDL1 less than 1% or a PDL1 between 1 and 49%, the addition of pembrolizumab with to the chemotherapy was superior to chemotherapy alone. Next slide, please. Uh, Keynote 407 was uh, look, looked at pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy for the squamous a non-small cell lung cancer, and in this in this trial too, we find that there was this uh, significant improvement in overall survival for the combination of PEMBRO plus chemotherapy. So both for uh, non-squamous and squamous non-small cell lung cancer, the combination of pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy uh, is a valid option. The response rates are also higher in this trial too. The response rate was almost 60% with the combo compared to 37% with chemotherapy alone. Next slide, please. Um, the grade three or higher adverse events in this trial seem to be similar in both groups, about 68%. Again, they have the higher discontinuation rate, however, with the PEMBRO plus chemotherapy arm, almost double as compared to chemotherapy alone. Next slide, please. So uh, we've looked at pembrolizumab alone. As uh, We've looked at the combination of pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy. What about the combination of a targeted therapy to the to immunotherapy and chemotherapy? Uh, what is the additional benefit? This was answered by IM Power 150 trial, which um, had three arms, uh, uh, atezolizumab with chemotherapy, 
versus atezolizumab with chemotherapy and bevacizumab, and the last uh, uh, arm, which was the uh, bevacizumab plus carboplatin and paclitaxel alone arm. And the trials, uh, the, the trial results that have been published have been looking at the uh, bev carbopacli versus bev carbopacli plus atezolizumab. Next slide, please. In this trial, uh, the the addition of uh, immunotherapy to the uh, to the bev carbopaclitaxel versus uh, uh, bev carbopaclitaxel alone showed there was improvement in a significant improvement in progression free survival and overall survival. Uh, the rate of uh, patients who had progressed at twelve months was almost uh, double. Uh, uh, the number of patients who were alive at twelve months was almost doubled in the, um, the immuno. Uh, bev carbopacli arm as compared to the bev carbopacli arm alone um, and the risk of death was lower and the response rates were higher next slide please however i think um, one of the problems with this in our setting will of course be cost and, I, and um, um, given that we have such good results with uh, immunotherapy plus chemo alone i would question the use of uh, the addition of uh, bevacizumab in in in, uh, in the current scenario except for one uh, particular group because um, patients who have egfr or ILK and who have progressed on uh, the targeted therapy can go on to uh, receive immunotherapy in this combination because this subgroup was included in this uh, ion power 150 trial a couple of my last slides are uh, looking at the use of uh, combination immunotherapy. And we know that there is now data for Nevo plus ipilimumab uh, given by this Checkmate 227 trial, which is a very complicated trial divided into part A, 1A, 1B, and 2. Here we have just the part 1, in which patients were divided uh, into two groups. In the first group, they uh, uh, about 400 patients received a combination of Nevo, nivolumab plus ipilimumab. Um, the second group received chemotherapy alone, and the third group received nivolumab alone. Um, in the 1B part of this trial, the patients were subdivided with P those who had PDL1 less than 1% were given either nivo plus EP or chemotherapy alone, and the last group received nivolumab plus chemotherapy. Um, the, there were co-primary endpoints for nivolumab plus ipilimumab versus chemotherapy, which is what was published. They looked at the PFS in these populations based on TMB and also the overall survival in the entire cohort. Next slide, please. So the first uh, um, results that were published were the combination of NEVO plus EP in, in patients with a high tumor mutational burden. We know that patients who have a TMB more than 10, 10 megabase uh, appear to have an, uh, an impre improved results with this combination. The progression-free survival at one year was 42% in the combination arm versus 13% for chemotherapy alone with a higher response rate and uh, not an increased um, uh, increased rate of grade 3 or grade 4 toxicity. So um, this was this held true regardless of the PDL1 expression, whether it was more than 1% or less more than 1%, regardless of the histology. Um, and it appeared that even patients who had low, uh, low PDL1 but a high TMB uh, benefited from this combination. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and this uh, held through also in their progression-free survival, where you can see that at one year, 43% in the combination arm was alive as compared to 13% alone in the chemotherapy arm. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So uh, this was the, the subsequent follow-up uh, uh, results on this trial, which looked at the combination of nivolumab plus uh, for uh, uh, versus chemotherapy alone for all patients. And in this, they found that there was a difference in overall survival in those patients who had a PDL1 more than 1%, about 15 months in chemotherapy alone versus 17 months, a two-month survival advantage. Um, the interesting point in this is that the median duration of response was 23 months as compared to 6.2 months with chemotherapy alone. Next slide, please. And even for patients who had a PDL1 less than 1%, the, the, the difference in overall survival remained. And in fact, it was increased with chemotherapy arm doing 12 months alone versus the combination uh, reaching up to 7.2 months, a difference of about five months. Next slide, please. And this is the entire cohort, which uh, which all showed a benefit, uh, survival benefit. Next slide, please. 
there was some uh, there were some secondary endpoints also that were evaluated in this uh, in this trial for patients with a pdl1 less than 1% the nevo plus chemo combination had an improved performance uh, progression free survival the hazard ratio for progression or death was also significantly in favor of the combination of nevo plus chemotherapy uh with a but the overall survival was not that different in the pdl1 more than 1% the they did manage to show that Uh, the combination of nevo plus ep versus nevo alone had an improvement in the duration of response the majority of the improvement seen in those with a pdl1 more than 50% with the duration of response was almost 3 years next slide please uh, the uh, next slide please Uh, the last this is the last trial which was recently uh, discussed in asco 2020 where they looked at the combination of nivolumab with ipilimumab with two cycles of chemotherapy versus four cycles of chemotherapy alone the primary endpoint was overall survival and there were secondary endpoints of progression free survival response rates and efficacy based on pdl1 next slide they showed that that uh, as regards the primary endpoint there was uh, the combination of Uh, nevo plus ep cycles of chemotherapy was superior as compared to four cycles of chemotherapy alone with a difference of about five five appear to benefit so perhaps in the future the pdl1 may not matter um for those patients who are, uh, may not matter if you are going to be receiving a combination of nevo plus ep next slide please uh because i i focus mainly on the first line therapy i just have one slide that has shown that for patients who have who do not have a mutation and who have received chemotherapy alone do we have several options when they progress in the past we had only docetaxel or gemcitabine but now uh, we know that immunotherapy has stepped into this uh, this this uh, particular scenario as well and we have three agents that are currently approved in the second line setting which is nivolumab uh, atezolizumab and pembrolizumab and here i have the results of a nivo versus docetaxel which was the one of the first trials that was published in 2014 and that showed that there was about a 3 month survival advantage for immunotherapy with uh, docetaxel with nivolumab versus docetaxel alone next slide please so my conclusion actually is that in today's era if, um, can we go to the next slide next slide is that for to take the inclusion of immunotherapy for patients without a druggable mutation has improved the survival uh, there were average survival prior to immunotherapy was anywhere between uh, 10 to 12 months with the arrival of uh, targeted therapy we improved it a, a few mo- two three months more but now there are some patients albeit low in number who are able to survive for almost 3 years the important point that we have to uh, we the factors that we have to consider however when we are selecting therapy is of course tumor histology the pdl1 score but eligibility for immunotherapy while we all like to think that uh, the toxicities are decreased as compared to chemotherapy uh, there still remain uh, significant toxicities uh, with immunotherapy that can prove to be fatal um, i will share a one co- one patient of powers who had a, uh, who was uh, who was given the pembrolizumab and had a very good a very good response however um she developed pneumonitis and we had to give her steroids after the use of steroids she ended up developing a fungal pneumonia and actually died from the fungal pneumonia which was um which was quite heartbreaking given that she she responded for her metastatic lung cancer so the eligibility for immunotherapy the appropriateness of that patient for chemo immunotherapy and if we are using bevacizumab then the eligibility for bevacizumab has to be um, looked at i think one of the markers that biomarkers that will emerge with uh, more use in the future is the tumor mutational burden because we have seen how tmb trumps pdl1 uh, for a uh, high tmb can trump the uh, uh, can trump pdl1 and perhaps and the you have to wind up no yeah uh, this is my last slide so yeah. i think so perhaps Uh, in the future we will not be using chemotherapy at all and maybe just looking at a combination of uh, pl1 and ctl1 for thank you so much